Hey everybody, today's topics are going to be a little heavier than usual, so trigger warnings for anxiety, depression, suicidal ideations, and subsequent treatment of those things. If that's not something you're interested in listening to, I totally understand. Feel free to click out now, and I'll see you next time. Ooh, I just had a major coughing fit. I apologize for today's lighting. I'm in my bedroom. The lighting out front was just not good today. A friend of mine is going through kind of a bad time mental health wise and it's not new it's been going on for quite a while and as a result he has been admitted to a psych unit i myself have done time in a psych unit and it changed my life i was fortunate in that i was one of the people whose lives was changed for the better because of it i'm not going to get into my origin story with anxiety ptsd depression or anything like that today but I am going to talk about my treatment and the weeks leading up to my treatment. Most of my life, I've been an insomniac. A lot of that comes directly from anxiety. And as a result, holding a job has been insanely difficult for me. I would usually bomb out of jobs pretty quickly because I would stress so much the night before that I wouldn't sleep at all. And then when I would go to work, I'd basically be a zombie, I'd do everything wrong, and then just the anxiety would just compound upon itself until I'd either get fired or just spaz out and quit. This is really common among people with anxiety, and a lot of treatment revolves around getting these people to where they're stable enough to actually have a job. In 2015, I got a really great job at a university. It was my first full-time job, and it was the first time I actually had health benefits. But as usual, I was not sleeping. I had it down to an art, if you will. I was seeing a doctor about taking sleep medication, but frankly, all of the sleep medication side effects freaked me out. And on top of that, a lot of those were also addictive. And I'm really freaked out by addictive substances, so I don't even try them to begin with. I figure I've got enough mental health problems, I don't need to make it worse. So one thing my doctor suggested was taking z -Quil because it was non-habit forming and would help me get to sleep in those first several weeks of my new job where the anxiety was going to be at its peak. This worked for about a year. And my doctor did explain to me that the reason for this was the half-life. And I am not even going to try to explain half-life because I don't fully get it. By January of 2017, I had almost been in my position for two years. I loved my job. I loved all the people I worked with. Everything about it was great. I, I truly felt blessed. January 23rd of 2017, for seemingly no reason, I had an anxiety attack. And it was debilitating. I started hyperventilating. I was throwing up. I was crying. And I have no idea what triggered it. I was just eating lunch. Something I realized with myself is I would always try to figure out why it would happen. Why am I having anxiety? Why am I having an attack? And not being able to figure out why would make it worse. If you don't know why something's happening, you can't fix it. And it just keeps happening. So I went home from work early. And then the next day I didn't go in. I stopped sleeping. And even with z -Quil, I just, I wasn't sleeping. I was trying anything I could find at that point over the counter. I was at a place where I was like, okay, fine. I will start taking insomnia medication if I have to. I went and saw a doctor and just cried. I was so nervous. I was shaking. I had stopped eating. I had stopped sleeping and I didn't know why. And she was like, I think you're depressed. Take this Paxil. And then I would read over all the stuff and that would make my anxiety worse. Like these side effects are worse than what's already happening to me. So I don't want to take this stuff. I was getting maybe two hours of sleep a night and my dreams were horrifying. I remember very specific dreams where I, at the time I lived in a farmhouse and I was living by myself. And I've learned that living alone for me, not a good idea because my anxiety is just too much. Any little noise I hear, I'm on high alert. I don't sleep. And so I was staying with my mother at the time. But even so, I kept having nightmares about the farmhouse. And in these nightmares, it was that grass and vines were growing up from the floorboards and wrapping around me and that the house was just constantly falling apart and was in total disrepair. And 
it was just, it doesn't sound that scary talking about it, but dreaming it every night for a week, it was scary. By February 2nd, I had decided that I was going to kill myself. I couldn't sleep. I had been missing work like crazy. I was running out of paid time off. I thought everything I've worked for, I'm going to lose because of this anxiety. What's the point of being alive? That was my rock bottom moment. That's when I realized there are two doors I'm standing in front of. I can kill myself in this. And I had a plan. Very sharp knives were the plan. Or I can call 911, go to the hospital where they may commit me, and then I can try medications in a controlled environment. Because I was so afraid of the medication, all the side effects and all the horror stories that I had heard, I, I was afraid to just take medication without somebody watching me. So at this point, I'm going to start reading from my live journal. So I wrote this on February 28th of 2017. I had a nervous breakdown and did 14 days in a mental hospital. The anxiety was just too much to handle and I became suicidal. So on February 2nd, I called 911 and I was taken to West Plains, Missouri, where I was put on Cymbalta and Seroquel. That's the nutshell version. Here's the long story. January 23rd, I started having anxiety attacks. Everything was going fine, honestly, but they just started and I couldn't get them to stop. I stopped eating and sleeping. I looked awful and I couldn't function. I went to work on the 26th and the 27th. And the evening of the 27th, I went to the doctor and described my attacks. She wanted to put me on Paxil, and I said I didn't want to get on an antidepressant because I wasn't depressed, just randomly anxious. She prescribed Vistaril. That night, I had an anxiety attack so severe that I was hyperventilating. It was just about midnight. I took a Vistaril, but it didn't even put a dent in the anxiety. I woke my mom up because she had never seen me have an actual anxiety attack before. In the past, when I'd mentioned anxiety attacks, she would tell me to suck it up or that I was feeling sorry for myself. Her seeing me like that really put things into perspective. I didn't sleep that night, and I tried to sleep on Saturday during the day, but the neighbors had chainsaws going all day to cut up a tree that had fallen down. I did finally fall asleep that night. I still hadn't really eaten, though. Everything I ate was either being thrown up or was instant diarrhea. The worst part is that I had absolutely no idea why I was panicking. Overall, things had been really good. A few bad things that weren't great, but that's life, right? I started to feel like I was slowly getting better when my mom was making me eat. Keeping my blood sugar reasonable helped to take the edge off, but it wasn't a cure. On Wednesday, the anxiety had gotten so out of control that I realized I needed to go back to the doctor. It was a different doctor in the clinic that day, and she said she didn't think I needed Paxil, but that I needed a stronger anxiety medication. She prescribed Buspar. Boyfriend, at the time, went into Walmart to get my prescription and sat with me while I cried. I drove home and took the Buspar around 9 p.m. By 10.30, I was in bed, and I finally fell asleep. 2.30 a.m., I wake up shaking violently. It's as if I'm drowning in pure terror. I started having a lot of suicidal thoughts. I can't live this way. I need to end this. I was having very specific thoughts about how to kill myself. I texted my boss around 4 a.m. and I said I wouldn't be in. The suicidal thoughts were so strong by 5 a.m. that I knew I had to call 911. The police showed up and then the paramedics. Fortunately, my uncle was one of the paramedics on duty, so he gave me a big hug and helped me calm down a bit. When we got to the ER, they drew blood and my uncle called my mom to let her know what was going on. The hospital staff tried to get me to eat, but I was just throwing it up. The head nurse was calling neuropsych units of various hospitals to see if there were any open beds. My mom showed up just before 7 a.m. I was mourning my own death. I started to say I wish I had done more. I wish I had accomplished more. I was certain nobody would be able to help me. The nurse was trying to find a hospital with a room for another psych patient. She came in and told us that the facility in West Plains was probably our best hope, but she was waiting on their psychiatrist to call back. They were monitoring us because a lot of times people threaten suicide, it is for attention, 
So they wanted to make sure I wasn't going to be taking a bed from someone who actually needed it. At noon, the psychiatrist called back and said they would take me. I was in an ambulance by 1.30 p.m. Being anxious, I was absolutely terrified. But once we were on the road for about 20 minutes, I started to calm down and enjoy the ride. I got to the West Plains Neuropsych Unit around 3 p.m. and I was on the acute side. I was pretty freaked out seeing these people. A lot of them had really violent tendencies. And so that was the first thing the intake nurse asked me. When you get fed up and angry, what do you do? Do you lash out? I told her I don't really get angry like that. I get frustrated, but not lashing out angry. She said the facility does use restraints if need be. I just needed to be aware. She took me to my room and got me some stuff to shower. It felt great to shower. I actually couldn't remember the last time I really took care of myself. Once I was done, they said they'd evaluated me and I could be moved over to the step down side which is for people who aren't acute, obviously. Because I was on suicide watch, I was put in the room right next to the nurse's station. Dinner was 5 p.m. I ate and called my mom. She had just worked an overnight shift, so she was asleep around 5.30. So I left her a voice message telling her I made it to the hospital okay and that so far everyone was super nice. I deliberately didn't give her the number because I was so exhausted I just wanted to sleep. But she got the number and she called me around 9.30 p.m. waking me up. I was a little aggravated, but she was apologetic. She upset me, though, because she said, While you're down there, I'm going to move your bed into my house because I want you to move in with me. I was so, ugh. I said, I really don't want to talk about this or think about this right now. She said she was sorry. We said our I love yous and good nights, and I went back to bed. At 5 a.m., a CNA came into the room to do my vitals. I got used to that quickly. 5 a.m., 1 p.m., and 8 p.m., our vitals would be taken. And in my case, more than that if I was having an anxiety attack so I could be sedated. If my blood pressure was too low, I couldn't be sedated. Fortunately, that was never an issue. The nurses would come around twice a day to listen to our hearts and lungs. Are you thinking about hurting yourself or someone else? Are you hearing voices or seeing shadows that aren't there? just the hurting myself part. Breakfast was served at 7 a.m. I had to be forced to eat on more than one occasion and forced to shower once. It was very difficult to get me out of my room at first. We had group therapy sessions at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and again from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. The first group therapy session I attended, we discussed general anxiety disorder. I was reading over the checklist and I hit the mark on every single one. Then I suddenly had hellacious diarrhea. I raised my hand and asked if I could please go to the restroom. I was given permission and scrambled back to my room where I sat on the toilet and cried. Not my finest moment. Then I sat on my bed and tried to hold it together. I just sat there rocking back and forth, staring at the window. Tears streaming down my face. Missing work. Missing my family. Missing the life that had vanished for apparently no reason. A nurse came in to check on me just as I was starting to hyperventilate. I started shaking uncontrollably. She brought me to the nurse's station, and they did my vitals and gave me an Ativan. Then they brought me to a special chair where I got to sit and cry forever while a nurse talked to me about how I was feeling. A little while later, I saw the psychiatrist. He was really nice and said he wanted to start me on a low dose of Cymbalta. The next day at the next group, we talked about major depressive disorder. Again, each one of those hit the mark and I burst into tears. Panic attack, another Ativan. The doctor increased my Cymbalta from 20 milligrams to 30 milligrams after a couple days. The only way I would leave my room, though, was to be sedated. I couldn't function around people without being sedated. They were struggling to find an anxiety medication that was actually helping me. Gabapentin was absolutely amazing in that it completely killed my anxiety, but I was high as a kite. I was super talkative, couldn't stay focused on a single task, and was dizzy. Sad that it had that many side effects because not being anxious was a beautiful change. They finally started me on Seroquel after I started crying after a couple days of not crying. I had said I felt like I slid backwards and they thought Seroquel would help round out the Cymbalta. It worked, but I had to be monitored for a few days. I was eventually assigned a roommate. She was really nice. One day she was crying and I asked her if she was okay and she said yes, but she really missed her dog. 
I felt bad for her because every time it seemed like she was going to get released, something came up and they kept her. At another point during my stay, a nurse violated HIPAA and I got very upset about it. We were sitting in group and this nurse says, Mallory, this person here also goes to Missouri S&T. That's where you work. You guys are from the same town. This might seem little, but at the, this point in my anxiety, it's tricky in that it can manipulate things. And I was convinced that this girl was going to tell everyone at s and about my horrific panic attacks and how my hair is never brushed and how I look like absolute hell. But after a couple of days, I approached her and we actually had a really nice conversation. During that bit, a guy I recognized from working at the local Walmart appeared, and we actually ended up becoming friends. We both live in Salem and drive to Rolla for work. He has a wife and three kids, all under the age of five. Hectic. Overall, the place was a good 50-50 mix of people who were there to have mental health medication adjusted or people who were there for drug and alcohol abuse issues. I was there for 14 days because that's all my health insurance would cover. I was really nervous about coming home at first, but once I started packing, I became more excited about it. The drive home was rainy and yucky. I had messages from several people wondering where I was. It was decided that it would be best for me to move in with my mom, which means I have to find a home and take three of my cats to the shelter. I hate to do that because I love them so much, but I can't live on my own anymore. My senior desk assistant had messaged me saying, when I said goodbye forever yesterday, I didn't mean it. I laughed and texted him back saying he made me smile. I had thought about him while I was in the hospital, wondering how he was handling the desk, worried perhaps I'd never see him again. I knew I would miss the way he gets so excited about stuff and talks about it forever. Even when I don't understand it, I enjoy listening because he speaks so passionately. I love being around people like that. The psychiatrist wanted me at home with my mom for a full week before I went back to work. I spent the week dreading going back to work because I was so scared I was going to have a massive anxiety attack and lose everything. It was this constant feedback loop of anxiety. I returned to work on February 20th. The first couple hours, the anxiety was hellish, but I took a couple of my as-needed pills and I got through the day. Tuesday and Wednesday were the same, but Thursday? Thursday was amazing. Friday was even better. As of Friday, I've not had to take any more of my as-needed pills. Just taking my assigned doses has done the trick. So what made me snap? I would say it was a culmination of things. There's been a lot on my mind lately. I'm 33. I have so little money that even though I work full time, I can't afford to live alone. I often feel very left behind when I compare my life to my old high school classmates. Budget cuts in my line of work. My credit score is bad and the car I'm paying on isn't worth even a fraction of what I'm paying. Death by a thousand paper cuts. I wanted to share that because I know there are a lot of people who struggle with their mental health. So we, we all do at some point, but some of us just go to that really insanely dark place where we think I can't be helped. And if I had killed myself in February of 2017, I would have missed so much wonderful stuff. I can't even begin to tell you how much I love my life today. I'm truly happy. I'm not one of those Instagram happy people. I'm really happy and I'm grateful to be alive. And I know that here I am at almost 41 years old, wanting to do things that much younger women do. You can't do that because you're 40. And it's like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever I want to because I'm still alive. And you should too. Don't look at yourself and say, I can't do whatever because of my age. I can't do whatever because of the way I look. You're alive today. But something else that's really important is sticking to the treatment. This medication didn't work. I'm still sad. I'm not taking it anymore. And it doesn't work that way. You do have to stick to the treatment plan because everyone tolerates medicines differently and they don't always work immediately. I was lucky in that they found Cymbalta quickly for me, but there was a lot of trial and error with my anti anxiety medications. And yeah, you might have some. And yes, medication does have side effects, especially in the beginning. But as long as they're not the more severe ones and your psychiatrist or your doctor or whoever's part of your treatment team tells you to keep taking them, listen, 
And if you aren't happy with what your doctor is doing to treat you, do your best to find another doctor. But you can't start a medication and then just immediately stop it. Something else that really scares me about my condition, if you will, is that depression is like cancer and that it goes into remission. And, you know, I've had stomach cancer. I got rid of my stomach. I can never have stomach cancer again. Yay. But I can get depressed again. It sometimes, sometimes I have nightmares that my medication stops working. And I'm really lucky that here, what is it, eight years later? I'm not good at math, but it is still working. But if you're ever thinking about suicide, reach out for help. Because I understand that when you get to the point where you want to take your own life, you really do feel that there is no help. There's no way out. Life can't get better. It will always feel this horrible. And that's just not true. But I'm going to call it here. I would love to hear your feedback or your experiences with uh, mental health treatment, mental health struggles, if you'd like to share. Um, I will definitely respond in the comments. And I hope everybody has a good evening.